Nashville Warbler is a small, energetic songbird. It is found mostly in the eastern boreal forests, with a small population residing near the west coast of North America. Some use the mnemonic CBIT 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 CCCCC to describe its song. My name is Rob, and this is Songbirding. I'm on the back roads again, this time in the woods and on foot. The Forty Hills Road is aptly named a winding, hilly, and narrow dirt road that alternates between open wetlands and mixed forest. While I've driven the road many times, I've never walked it, and I don't know exactly what to expect. Head Ontario. I'm gonna try birding off the side of the road. I'm gonna treat this road like a giant trail. Let's see if there's anything interesting back here. Sounds like a American Red Start. Just on its own. Black capped chickadee as well. Let's go towards the chickadee. In the winter, it's always a good idea to go towards chickadees because lots of other birds follow them around. Don't dismiss them because they're common. Probably not the same in the summer though. That's more cicadas. Yes, we have a blue-headed vireo and a raven. American red star. This is the second raven in the distance too. I'm making some weird sounds though. Maybe that's not the raven. Ooh. Had something try to sneak past me. Okay, I'm not sure what that is. It's headed this way though. Something tried to fly by in the road. Thought I wouldn't notice it, but I noticed it now. Went right into the woods. Now they're large and brown. I think it was too small to be a grouse. 
may have been a thrush. So the other thing I noticed is I parked too far down the road. I could have come in quite a bit more. Because now I'm hitting the no winter maintenance spot. I could have just parked too. Almost sounds like geese in the distance. I don't think they're in the air though, so I'm not going to be able to see them. Some chickadees. I'm going to have to review this warbler later. Oh, I see. There's both. So you're hearing right now is red-eyed vireo. Earlier, though, it was blue-headed. So I hear them. In the spot where I was. Interesting. So that's two blade headed videos here. One I heard briefly, the other I heard more than briefly. And then a red eyed. Some crows making the racket right now. And now we're in the marsh area where we have common yellow throat singing. That other warble, I'm drawing a little bit of a blank, but I think it's yellow rumped warbler, aka myrtle warbler. Could also be Nashville warbler. It looks more likely than Nashville, actually. to listen more closely to this bird. To listen to how clean the warbles are. So the reason those two are difficult is because they could both be in this habitat. Nashville Warbler There's a few extra ticks in between the warbles. I don't know how best to describe it, but the trill has a little more activity going on. The little warbler's a little softer and cleaner. And this bird seems to be kind of in between. It may just be because I can't hear the extra complications in the warble. say it's not sounding like the myrtles I'm used to hearing, but it doesn't mean they always sound the same. OK, 
in cases like this, it's a good thing I have a recording, because I can check later. Back to that later on the way back. Are you still going then? Some more swings. swing as well, yes. So that song, so the Swamp Sparrow is just the ringing you just heard, kind of in the distance, but the other warble, which I'm not sure, you have to bat. That could be Nashville. towards it being a natural warbler. But I could be wrong. And again, good thing I'm recording this. We can review this after and see what it is and why it is that bird. My guess is though is that I'm listening to a Nashville warbler. One of the most common birds in Ontario, but not seen very often or heard very often. Because it's common in all the places where people are not common. I'm going to go a little bit more than turn around. Gives me another opportunity with this species. I'm getting more convinced this is Nashville warbler. That was sounding pretty complicated to me compared to Myrtle warbler, also known as Yellow Rump warbler. Oh yeah, that's sounding like Nashville to me. So you can hear a morning dove in the distance. Not black through the green warp in there. Hopefully the sun is giving us a break now. Some clouds coming in. So this road mostly goes through a mix of cedar, aspen, a few other broadleaf trees. Uh, both coniferous and deciduous trees. I'm seeing a few willow here, even. A couple of ash trees. A few maples. This is kind of a traditional mixed forest. Very rocky, though. A bit of black spruce here too, which you can easily identify. I 
looking for the trees that are really extremely narrow and tall that are spruce. Are passing through. You'll never hear it, but it's there. There's two yellow throats here in the American Ridge as well. There's a gust of air here. This vulture's riding the uh, wind. passing through. You'll never hear it, but it's there. This vulture's riding the uh, wind. Just going on here. While I wasn't entirely sure about my identification for the Nashville Warbler, it appears I was mostly correct in my assessment. There is a fairly quiet call of a Myrtle Warbler in there a couple times though. We'll encounter more of them soon. During this hike, I found 26 species, nine of which clear audio recordings were obtained. To listen to these clips and learn more, visit songbirding.com. Songbirding, the Bruce Peninsula, was recorded, engineered, narrated, and created by me, Rob Porter, with Creative Commons music by Stranger 8.